Hey guys, welcome back to my channel and if you are new, welcome, thank you for stopping by. So today is story time day and today's story is definitely a wild one. I was about 16 years old and I was trespassing with my friends at this like haunted, a sane asylum or something like that and we got pulled over by the police and they drew their weapons. So if you want to hear this crazy story, make sure you stick around. It's gonna be a long one. So, you know, get yourself some popcorn, put it on in the background if you're cleaning, if you're at work, and let's get into this story. So, like I said, I think I was in 11th grade, so I was about 16 years old. And around this time, it was really, really popular to go to this place called Rosewood. People were doing it for about a month or a few weeks. And so Facebook and MySpace, you know, was really popping. So people would put their videos and stuff of them going up to Rosewood on their on their like pages or whatever. So I was excited. I was watching people's videos and I'm like, okay, I want to go. This is this seems like it's going to be fun. So the next week, me and my homegirls, we get together and we're like, all right, we're going to go. So pick us up. It's about five of us. And I I'm, I'm got my suit on, got on my all black, got on my black bands, and I'm ready to go, right? So we pull up, and you have to go up this hill, you know, to get all the way up to the place. So there's a main building, which is huge, and then there's, like, little buildings. So we didn't want to go to the big building. Kind of chickened out. We're like, okay, let's go to one of the smaller buildings and see, you know, what's popping. So we go around there, and mind you... In my mind, I'm kind of freaking out because I've seen ghosts before and none of my friends have. So I'm thinking like, okay, I'm going to probably be the one to see something and really be scared. And they're not going to have a clue on why I'm, I'm afraid. So, but anyway, I'm like, I'm still going to go. I'm still going to try to enjoy myself and have fun. Like, I don't know why people like doing scary things, but it, it's just, it's fun. And, and kids are stupid. So... Um, we pull up and there's a whole bunch of other kids already there from other schools. So I went to Milford. It was kids from Randallstown, Woodlawn, Polly, Western, all over the place. This was so popular. I don't know why once again. <laughs> so we get up to the, to the place and my friends, they're ready to go in. I chickened out at the last minute. I was like, I can't. I can't go in there. I'm scared. It's, you can already see people in there running around. They're screaming. So I'm like, I'm just going to wait down here for y'all at the door. So they go up. They take their phones out, getting ready to record. And not even a few moments later, police cars start rushing up the hill just out of nowhere. All these cars with their sirens on. They're flying up the grass. And it's time to go. It's time to get out of there. But my friends are in the house. I didn't go get them. I, I just started running. I, I don't know what to do. I'm like, what do I do? Go in there and get them or go ahead and make a run for it. So I made a run for it. And as I was, you know, running, getting myself together, I look behind. Everybody's now, they're starting to run. People are getting out of there. It's like a woods area over here. And then when you get further down the hill and further to the street, there's an um, apartment complex. So my goal was to get there. So I go over to the left because all the cop cars was, like, coming up to the right where the building was at. They were, like, trying to surround the building. So I'm thinking, okay, I'm going to go over to the left. I go over to the left. A cop car from this way and a cop car from this way come like this and, and corner me in, single me in. I couldn't do anything but run in between them. So I just ran through the, like the middle. I could see the cop opening the door as I'm like running through the middle of the cars. And I just started booking it, like going down the hill. I was scared. I thought I was going to fall. That's how fast I was running. I did not look behind me anymore. I was just gone, like track star. Okay. So I get down to the end of the hill and I see the apartment complex. So I start buzzing all the bells like, okay, somebody's going to open the door. Somebody's going to let me in. Finally, somebody lets me in and I run down to underneath of the steps. You can hide underneath of the steps in like old apartment buildings. So I'm waiting there and I'm like, all right, I know my homegirl's going to be right behind me. They're going to make it. 
Nobody gonna get locked up. I'm just sitting there like, please, God, please let them make it. So about a few minutes later, I hear, you know, some girls talking. So I look out. It's my friend. So I'm like, come on, y'all. I got, you know, I got a high spot. So we go down there and we hide. We all out of breath. We just, like, laughing. But we trying to be quiet. We nervous, but we excited. I mean, the thrill of it was just crazy. It was fun. And nothing like that had ever had happened to me before, you know. I went to a county school. So it was just like, that was, that was cool. So my friend, she over there puffing her inhaler because she got asthma. And we like, all right, we just going to wait it out. Wait till we don't hear no more sirens. And then we're going to just get out and go to the car. So we hear some more voices. So we're like, okay, who is, who is this? So we peek out. It's some boys. It's like five boys. So we go out there. And they like, yeah, the coast is clear. Like, y'all good. Y'all can come out. So my homegirl, she knows one of the boys. So she like, oh, hey, what's up? And they like, how y'all doing? Whatever. They tell us about their little running. Like, a few of the boys had to hide in the woods. They said they was laying down on their stomachs. And, like, the police was, like, walking right past them. It was crazy. So they like, all right, well, y'all try and come back through tomorrow. Since it's not going to be probably that hot tomorrow. You know, they probably not thinking that nobody's going to come. Y'all really want to come back tomorrow and see what this Rosewood thing is really all about. Because basically, like, we just got there and they bust up the party. Like, all those other kids had already been there. But we had just got there. So we didn't really get a chance to really walk around and really have fun in the spooky haunted houses or whatever. So we like, yeah, we down. Let's go. So we told them, are right, we going to meet up tomorrow? <sighs> Shouldn't have did it. Shouldn't have met up with them the next day. But being kids, it is what it is. So we meet up with them the next day. And this time around, we don't drive two separate cars. We just go into the one boy's truck. He had like a three-seater truck. So we like, are right, we might as well just all ride together. They picked us up. And I was all the way in the back with my best friend. Then in the middle row, I think it was like three or four people in the middle row. And then it was a person in the passenger and the driver. <sighs> Here's where the story gets real, y'all. So, they like, okay, well, y'all want to go to this um, haunted cornfield first just to like, you know, stall some time. So we like, yeah, let's go to that one first and see what that's all about. So we pull up there, like a um, cheese bus, an old deserted, like broke down cheese bus. So we get on there, acting like we going somewhere, taking selfies, just being stupid. And then we like, all right, come on, let's go walk through the maze. Now the maze, it wasn't nothing exciting. The boys really was doing most of the scaring, like trying to poke at us and make us jump and doing little scares scary stuff and trying to scare us but it wasn't really you know nothing and by this time it was a little dark it was probably like 6 30 going on 7 so it was starting to get dark so we're like all right come on let's go like this way let's just go to rosewood and see what's popping over there so we on the way back and i happened to look up and i see a helicopter and it wasn't just like it was just flying or you know just in the sky i just felt like it was following us and it was pretty low and it was like hovering so i didn't say anything i just looked i peeped it i'm like okay maybe it's nothing so we get in the car and we start driving probably not even 10 minutes later i turn around and i see the helicopter again because mind you i'm sitting in the third row so it's glass behind me so I look out and I see the helicopter and now you can kind of hear it. It's close. It's loud. And it's no coincidence that I already saw it a few miles back. So now I'm telling them like, okay, y'all, I think a helicopter is following us. And they're like, nah, you tripping, you tripping. I'm like, well, do you think they know we're going to Rosewood? Like, what's going on? You know, and they like, they can't possibly know where we're going. Like, just calm down. You, you're just being nervous. You're just trying to, you know, be a killjoy. And I'm like, no, I'm really not. Like, I seen it at the cornfield, and now it's the, it's the, it has to be the same one. So they like, you good. Like, chill out. So I'm like, okay, fine. Let it go. When I tell y'all it seemed like it was only a second later, it hadn't have been that much time from when we just had that conversation to a split second later, we are stopped because six police cars jump out of nowhere corner us he can't even drive anymore because one came from the front one came from the side there's few in the back they all pull up like i was like where 
where did they come from? Like, we did not see them driving nothing. They just came out of nowhere. They all hopped out their cars, pulled their guns out, had their guns like this, screaming, put your hands up, get out of the car. And I'm just like, no. Mm -mm. This is not happening right now. And they screaming at us again. Put your fucking hands up. Get out of the car. Guns still. It's like eight police officers. I'm like, oh my God. Was this a bad idea or no? <laughs> like, so we sitting there like this now. And we like, okay. Like, you know, all of this because we're going to Rosewood. Like, so now they open the door. And, you know, it's. It's a lot of us in there it's three rows it's hard for you to get out so they yelling at us they you know they're telling us to get out they're trying to pull on us and we just like okay you know we come and we trying to get out it's hard to get out and so you know it takes a lot of time to get everybody out because it's three rows you know the first people they scared so they you know still taking their time in a sense and then they got to put the chair down so that we can get out and we still you know stand like this so they don't pull nothing and it just like takes me back this story is funny because of you know what happened and how it happened but at the end of the day times were different back then um this was like 2005 2006 and not like that you know stuff wasn't going on but not as much as it was following Trayvon Martin and up till now back when I was in high school we didn't have to go through that like so, I'm just, like, as I'm telling this story, I'm also super blessed that it happened in a time where it happened because, honestly, like, they could have shot us, y'all, like, for real. And as I'll keep telling the story, you'll know why, but, like, they could have shot us. They didn't have to be as nice as they were. And even though they did pull their guns out and they had their guns in our face, that was enough in itself but that's no comparison to how some of these people have died in the hands of police officers so yes this was a crazy story and it was funny and it was an experience but i'm so thankful that it happened back then when it wasn't so many police killings back to back because that would have been a tragic day honestly if we did not have those police officers that we had so um, I'm getting out and at this point we still have our hands up. We still don't know what's going on. I'm thinking that they're pulling us over because we're trespassing and we're about to go trespass again. I have no idea, but that was totally not the case. So they're, they like, they put the boys on the ground and they don't put us on the ground. So they come over to us and they're like, do you girls know these boys? So we like, yeah, like we didn't lie to him and say like we just really met him yesterday. You know, I mean, we didn't tell him the truth. We lie, you know. So we like, yeah, we know them. We know them. So they like, oh, what's their names and stuff. So, you know, we knew, I knew one of the boys' real name and I knew two boys' nicknames. So I said their nicknames and stuff and he was just like, oh, you know, that's not even his real name. You guys don't know these boys that well. And so then we finally just told him like, yeah, you know, we just met him yesterday so they're like, well, if you were my daughter, I would tell you to just be careful about who you hanging out with. Where are you guys on your way to? So we were like, we just was going to just go to their house, get some pizza and chill. Once again, lying. So they like, well, do you guys know what kind of boys you hanging out with? So we like, okay, like, what's this about? Like, obviously, this is not about Rosewood now. So we like, you know, no. And they said, well... Honestly, we know that you guys had nothing to do with what happened, and that's the only reason why we're letting you off the hook. You guys need to be more careful about who you meet and who you hang out with because you don't know what people are up to in their lives. So now we really sitting there like, okay, like this is crazy, and we caught up in some shit that we don't even know about because we wanted to go trespass and do something that we almost got locked up for yesterday. So he's like, well, do you girls have anybody to come pick y'all up? Because if not, y'all going to have to come down to the station. So we like, okay, the one girl, she said she can call her brother. And we waiting for her brother to get there. He finally gets there. Um, and he's just like, you know, 
be careful and all this other stuff. They lecture us a little bit. And then we get into her brother's car. He had a two-door car. It was like four of us trying to squeeze in there. He already had somebody with him. So we got still on each other lap, which is also illegal. But the police didn't say anything. You know, we had to get out of there any way we could because we just didn't want to get locked up with them. So they sitting on the curb. We looking at them like, what y'all got us into? Like, that's crazy. So I think they had to spend like a night or something in jail. And we talked to them after. So we asked them, we like, what was that about? Like, they really pulled us over and had their guns in our face like we committed murder or something. Like, what was that for? Basically, the day before, the, the like, so not yesterday when we went to Rosewood, but the day before that, they were all hanging out and apparently they stole somebody's dirt bike. And so somebody called it in, reported it stolen, reported the truck and the license plate. That explains why I seen the uh, helicopter because they were looking for them. They were already looking for them. They had the names, they had the suspects, they had the truck, they had all of that stuff. So they had been looking for them since they did it two days ago. And when we went to the thing, they, they spotted us and then they followed us and they finally, you know, pulled us over at that point. So he told us like, yeah, you know, we had stole somebody thing. We didn't know that they knew they had our description and all of that kind of stuff. They they was apologizing to us like we really sorry that we put y'all through that and we didn't mean to. We just wanted to hang out with y'all and have fun. Like we were so mad at them. Like, are you kidding me? Like the only reason why they did not lock us up is because they knew that we was not involved. But I don't know if you guys know like you know how things work with police but it doesn't even matter like if you are in the car with somebody if somebody has weed and you're in the car for example y'all get pulled over just because it's not your weed or you don't smoke that don't mean nothing like you're going to jail too so like i said we really had some nice cops and i feel like yeah they pulled the guns out of stuff because they didn't know that we were in the car with them already but so they were really after them but even still like we were teenagers that wasn't necessary but uh, i digress but yeah so you know we still was talking to them we still hung out with them afterwards we was a little mad at them at first but you know we ended up spending a lot of time together afterwards and we kind of became like a crew so it's just like a funny memory that that's how our friendship started and then you know after that no more trouble no more bad stuff we just really just had fun legal fun and yeah so <laughs> that is pretty much the end of the story and my lesson i guess at the end of this story time is just know who you're surrounding yourself with um, you know, it's not possible to always know everyone's history and what people are doing behind closed doors, but just don't get yourself caught up because like I said, that could have been a crazy day and we could have prevented it if we weren't trying to be so much of a rebel and go again and, and possibly get in more trouble. So just know your friends, know who you're surrounding yourself with and yeah, so thanks so much for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed. Hope it wasn't too long. And I will talk to you guys real soon. Bye.